Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and we're here to install the Our Spindle Kit uh, version 4 onto the Onefinity Build Botox slash Black Box controller. Uh, stick with me and let's dig into it. Mm. Alright, let's dig into what you actually receive with your spindle kit. First, you'll receive our electronics package. Uh, right now, this is version 4. On the back, you may have a label that lists which version it is and points you directly to our knowledge base website with photos, details, and programming, and everything that we've done to your VFD. Um, the kit will uh, should also include a uh, cable. Um, this is listed separately on your shopping cart, so don't worry about that. But it will be in there. Um, in this case, we're using a Modbus connection, so we've got our 20, DB25 breakout uh, connector on the end of our control cable. Uh, your kit will come with a motor. In this case, it's the 1.5 kilowatt 110 um, water-cooled version. We've got the cool connectors installed. Um, I've got the uh, a chiller installed, and I'll show you that in just a second, but um, this basically snaps right in, plugs in, lets your coolant um, and that sort of thing. We've got our power cable there. This is all of our 80 millimeter spindles come with the ER20, which allows for up to half inch collets, which is what we've got here. We've got three collets that come with your kit, the half inch, the uh, quarter inch, and an eighth inch for the ER20. Um, you've got three different, three other sizes for your uh, ER11. So the smaller 65 millimeter motors have an ER11. You'll also have the uh, collet nut um, as well as the three collets. We've also included these uh, very cool uh, wrenches. Uh, in this case, is a 30 and a 21, which comes with the ER20. Um, nice, great handles, very thick uh, five millimeter hardened steel. That is awesome. We love those. It'll also include the control, or I'm sorry, the power, spindle power cable. On the 80 millimeter spindles, that will include a H20 Control, uh, aircraft connector on one end and our VFD uh, WS16 connector on the other. And then of course you've got the motor and if you've got it water cooled um, you can have the option of a couple different cooling systems. We've got the water pumps right now. We will soon have chillers available um, probably at the end of the summer um, depending on how long it takes to import them. But you uh, will probably have a pond pump, which you can just drop right into a five gallon bucket um, and then run your tubes to that and back and it'll basically circulate the coolant through the motor. But again, this is the water cooled. We also have air cooled, which are also awesome. Look at some of our other videos uh, to take a look at that. But let's dig into the uh, actual installation. So you have the uh, 1.0.9 uh, Onefinity firmware in your BuildBotics black box controller, um, and you would like to uh, hook up our VFD. There's an easy way to do it. It's a little bit, there's several steps involved, but it can be done um, re relatively easily. So I've created a uh, temporary addendum piece of paper here, and it's published on our KB article. If you, and it basically uh, walks you through the steps. And I'm going to walk through those steps now and we'll validate that it's actually configured and working properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a couple of settings we've got to change in the VFD in order to make it compatible with the older firmware. Uh, basically we have to um, hack a few settings here and 
to kind of get the calculations to work because the calculations that the controller spits out um, to control the VFD they're rather complicated and embedded deep in the code uh, of the controller and the only way to really do it is to kind of fudge some numbers so that it works properly but installation is easy um, so you go to mode you go over to the um, well we're on the first digit there go up to seven and we're going to change it from the default 400 which is the hertz of the motor this is where the calculations are kind of funny we have to change it and fool it into thinking it's got a thousand hertz motor now once you've configured all the settings there's no damage to anything um, it knows how to run the calculations properly but we just have to tell it this um, just to get this working now again in the KB article, I do describe what we do have to disable. We have to disable the manual override switch on the, on the left side. Um, and we do that by going to P0100, hit enter. And we're going to change it from an 8 back down to a 0. And hit enter. And then on P0101, we're going to change that from a 2 to a zero. Two more settings. Um, the next one is going over to P2002. We're going to change that from a 21 down to a 9 and hit enter. Next P003, which is we're already there, change that from the 18. We're going to change that down to a 10 and hit enter then hit mode now the vfd is now prepared and ready okay next up we need to configure our um, v our, our controller here so we're going to go to the hamburger menu up to tools change that to custom mod bus vfd now here's a couple of settings we need to modify here we need to change this to 60,000. And this is all detailed on the document, on our temporary override document. Minimum spin of zero. We're gonna change the second setting to low high, the third set, or the or tool enable mode, low high, tool direction mode, low high. Scroll up, everything should be defaults here. Bus ID is one, bot is 9600, parity is none, and multi, uh, multi write is unchecked. Now we need to go in and actually enter our new, we need to edit our Modbus program basically. And that program is listed right here and I worked this out with BuildBotics directly um, to figure out exactly what to enter in here so that the calculations work properly with the VFD modifications we made earlier. So the first setting we're going to set is the frequency read. So we're going to hit the, dis uh, click disabled, that drop down, it pops up the big menu. Um, click frequency read. And in the address, we're going to enter in 36864. Now, our second setting is max frequency read. So on that disabled option, click that drop down, and it will pop up, and we can choose max frequency read. And in this value, we're going to enter in 7. Third value is, click disabled again, uh, frequency set. So frequency set, we're going to hit our uh, address location. Address is 40961. Okay, our fourth setting is forward right. So we're going to hit disabled again. Find forward right in the menu. And we're going to change the address to Four zero nine six zero, and on this particular setting we actually need to configure a value and the value is 1 okay it looks like our uh, what our fourth fifth setting <laughs> click disabled um, oh, click disabled and we are going to do a stop right so stop right and hit the back there and in our address location, it's the same address, 
40960. In this case, the value is going to be 5. All right, our sixth setting, let's see, status read. So drop down, status read. Click that. And in the address there, status read is 45056. And our, looks like our seventh setting is reverse write. So we're going to drop this down, reverse write. And in the address location, we are going to put 4. 0960. This one also has a value, and the value is 2. And for our eighth setting, our eighth and last setting, click the, dis uh, the disabled drop down, choose disconnect right. That's going to be down here at the bottom. And in this location, we're also going to be putting in 40960, and in the value is 5. So we should be able to confirm our settings. Frequency read, freq max frequency read, frequency set, forward write, stop write, status read, reverse write, and lastly, disconnect write. All of our settings and values are all in there correctly, and we are good to go. So we hit save, and if everything worked out correctly, we should see no failures on our program. This is where it's the controller is reaching out to the VFD and asking questions. This is kind of a two-way communication thing. This is the address that it needs to ask in the controller. This is the value that it needs to pass in order to make those changes, if it's making changes, like if it wants to put it into forward mode or stop mode, these are kind of the settings. If there's no failures, you will see a connection OK sitting there at the top, which you're all good. So now we are all configured. We can go back to control, hide our hamburger menu, and we can come in here and type M3S6000. M3 means go forward. S6000 means go 6000 RPMs. If we hit play there, our VFD will spin, will go into run or forward mode, which is, it goes from blinking, which is stopped mode, to solid, which is um, forward mode, and then it spins up to the 6000 RPMs we told it. If we want to change another setting, we can go uh, forward S12000. and now it will spin up to 12,000. You can see that here on the speed. 12,000 is what it's set to. 12,000 in parentheses is what it's actually reading back from the VFD when it's running through all those calculations. So our VFD is all configured. If we type in an M5, that basically tells the VFD to stop. So now it'll go back to blinking mode and you're all set. Okay, so I've got my carving. I've set my zero, 00 artificially somewhere over here, um, just so we're cutting air. Basically, I want to show you the entire process of running a carve. So I've loaded my file here. I've got my Z, uh, my zero set. I've got my VFD and everything plugged in, ready to go. We're going to hit play. It's going to spin up the uh, the spindle motor, which triggers our vacuum based on the IoT power strip add-on. It's waiting for us to say, hey, we're up to speed. Let's go ahead and continue. Hit continue. It's going to run its carve at the RPMs that was specified in the file. And as soon as it is done, it will return back to uh, zero, turn off the spindle, turn off the shop vac automatically, and we're all set to uh, pull our carve out and load another one in if we want to just keep going. So all of that is automatic. I hope you found that informative, plugging up our spindle kit um, into the Onefinity BuildBotics black box style controller. It's super easy, um, easy to navigate. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or shoot us an email at support at and we're happy to help. Um, and remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it. Mm -hmm.